Good afternoon, magnificent people. How are you today? I hope you all have a bit more energy than me. I'm absolutely on my last legs today. So, I had quite a few days in the garden. It's just a few hours at a time getting the field beans dug in, getting the trenches done, getting my fence finished. I really wanted to push on with all of that because of needing to leave some time fallow between turning the beans, beans in and planting. But my goodness, it's kind of wasted me. And I really come to the conclusion that this living without a wage, trying to grow all your own food, is exhausting. <laughs> I think it's just one of those times a year when suddenly there's a lot to do, not just in the garden, but I've got lots going on at home too, indoors. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm having a quiet day at home today. In a minute, we're going to do some pricking out and potting on. Already this morning, I've done a load of cooking, which I probably still have quite pink cheeks from it because the kitchen's been really, really warm. Fortunately, there's no wind and rain today, so I've been able to have the windows wide open. Yay! Um, but yes, over the last few days in the garden, um, I noticed that my lovely January King cabbages, which I've been having one of here and there sort of thing, they all look like they were getting ready to boil out, as in they want to turn into flowers. I really didn't want that to happen, so I've had a lot of them out and brought home. So I've got a couple of really good, or maybe about four or five really good, good tight heads which I've just parked outside my front door where it's really cool but some of the leaves where they've where they've started to sort of fall apart a bit as it were I've literally just made gallons of soup with them this morning along with some spinach so no I didn't film it I didn't have time I just had to get on with it I was a production line again um, but it was the same principle as my broccoli and spinach did I do that? Yeah, I did that for you guys, didn't I? Back in November or whatever with some, um, with those lovely warming spices. So yes, busy, busy, busy time. Um, also, just a quick note, it's getting to that time. Now that I have two freezers, if you remember last year I had to buy another freezer because all the beans got felled when they were still green. Actually, it's proved really, really useful. And each freezer's got different stuff in, obviously. And what I've, they were both getting to the sort of half empty stage. So what I'll do, um, I was kind of just noticing that this morning when I was finding spaces for the cabbage soup. What I'm gonna do now is amalgamate them all into one so that I can defrost and clean one of the freezers. When that's done and it's back up to freezing temperature, I'll move everything from the other freezer into the spare and defrost the other freezer. So if you're getting to that time of year when your supplies are getting really, really depleted, just kind of plan, maybe plan over the next sort of two or three months the sort of meals you're gonna have from them so you get to hopefully maybe about the beginning of June so the freezer is completely empty, you can turn it off, get it defrosted, get it cleaned and get it back up and running for say the end of June when the first of this year's new crops will be coming in, which I'm so excited about. Oh, actually, sorry, I'm digressing now. You see, I have no energy, but as soon as I start talking to you guys, I feel a bit more peppy. Um, I was chatting with plot friends the other day and saying how it's funny all through the summer, especially when I'm doing my little sort of garden walkabouts at the beginning of each month with you, I'm kind of looking at all the the winter stuff, the calabrese, the celeriac, the cabbages. And I'm always saying, oh, I can't wait for winter. I love my winter grub. I can't wait for some of those really strong, robustly flavored carrots in November, etc., etc." And it's true, I do love them. But in the last few weeks, I've been fantasizing about tomatoes. <laughs> I just want a fresh tomato. I mean, I'm sort of fantasizing about other things too. The first of the green beans, the climbing beans, when they're really young, fresh pods, I love them. The first broad beans, oh 
can't wait to get a mouthful. I've got my very, very last portion in the freezer of the frozen ones. So I'm thinking in the next few weeks I can use them because the new harvest will be here in oh, April, May, maybe about eight weeks. So yeah, I'm fantasizing about all the summer veg at the moment. And talking of fantasizing about summer veg, it's time to do the potting on of the peppers. Now, I sowed everything on the 12th of February. So that was peppers, celeriac, what else did I do? On oh, the random last bits of drains. Let's not talk about the flowers today. So the 12th of February they were sown. They germinated about two weeks later. And normally, or sort of going on last year, year before whatever, I tend to pot on prick out after about four weeks they're big enough. So today it's more like five weeks. So I think I've been a little bit tardy, but it's fine, they'll be okay. So this is what the peppers are looking like at the moment. This is the orange bell, which is the sweet pepper. Now, I'm not sure, I don't think that they're particularly leggy. I just think that, if you see slightly more from the top, where they're sort of crowding each other out, they're fighting for light a bit. So that's why I really need to get them potted on today. And if you remember, let me just get one out to show you. Hopefully you saw the video when I was sewing them. So I'd read a few times over the winter that two together will grow really strongly. So I thought, hmm, okay, let's experiment. So I am going to pot some up as a two, but quite a lot of them I'm gonna pot up as one. And when I come to do the single ones, rather than disturbing all the roots, all I'll do is right down at soil level, I'll just snip out the weaker plant and then just put that whole plug of compost into the next pot up. <clears throat> Having seen these in the last few days, wondering if they're fighting for light a bit because they are so close to each other and because this is a bit of an experiment I was originally thinking about doing half and half half snipping and half doubling up I'm actually going to do slightly less doubling up just because I don't want to risk losing them and it not working and also the, all the articles I've read about doing it like this I've not seen any photographs so I wasn't able to see quite how close the plants were um, or how good the results were. So it's just, I'm literally having to take someone else's word for it. So I'm happy to have a go, but with slightly less of my plants than I originally planned. I'm gonna do the peppers first and then the celeriac because the peppers are gonna go into nice big pots. And then once these are empty, these can become the individual pots for the celeriac because they're a perfect size for the celeriac's first little solo pot. Um, it gets to that time of year as well now where we're continually sort of potting on and sewing something else. We're always scrabbling for pots. Of course, I make tons of paper pots, but it just makes sense today to do these first, get these pots emptied, and then they can become the pots for the celeriac, which we'll do after the peppers. Now the thing about doing anything new, anything for the first time, is you don't have anything to go on from having tried it previously, so I'm just sort of trying to select the ones I want to keep as pairs, um, trying not to go for the ones that are too tall, I think, I think these are going to do me. Um, in terms of pot size I'm sure people will give you some sort of mathematical equation actually let me tip you down a bit more a mathematical equation about oh you need to go up by 10% or 20% or however many percent I go up pot size in terms of what pots I've got I'm such a bad gardener um, it's literally what what have I got available what can I use so I'm going to give them a jolly good tap and then pop them in all the time, just avoiding touching their stems because that's, at this stage, the weakest part of the plant. So if you have to hold them at all, just try and hold them by their leaves. 
give it a bit of a firm in. I should probably do a little bit more compost in there. I've made life a little bit difficult for myself today because um, last night I gave everything a really thorough watering because although the weather here hasn't been very warm, it's so bright in that window, everything was looking really dry and I had a bit of a uh, moment. However, having made them wet, they're a little bit trickier to handle today. There we go. So you can see how the roots are developing nicely already. Beautiful. Which also, it sort of demonstrates, you can see they were swirling around a bit there. It demonstrates how when I come to thin out the ones that I want to do as singles, if I started trying to tug one of them out of the pot, the chances are is that to get rid of it, the chances are as I do that, it's going to be tugging on the roots of the other and damage them. So yeah, a quick snip should sort it. No problem. This year's been so funny because of the weather. I kind of... I sort of almost... I'm still not sort of quite feeling it. Um, how to articulate that? It, I still feel that we're in the middle of winter. I still feel this year hasn't properly got going. And I think that's because, for me, the outside time is really important. And so much of my outside time, it's been either really chilly or it's just been so overcast. There's only been that one really sunny day so far. So, yeah, it just feels like I'm still a bit in last year, which is kind of weird. And I know that we're all, I think we're all really, really fed up at this stage, aren't we? But it's not just about having a bit of warmth, which would be nice, but I think just that thing of having the brightness of the light I think we're all like the plants, we're all, we're all getting a bit leggy because we've been indoors for far too long. Come on sunshine, we need you. Yeah, definitely feeling in need of a good dose of the bright yellow stuff. Oh, it's a bit twigging that, never mind. Get rid of it. Get me a nice firm. <coughs> So I won't water these again today, I'll just let them settle down. Like I said, there's plenty of moistness in the compost as is. Good. Right, I'm not going to show you absolutely all of these because it's going to take me an hour and that will just become really boring or it might become a meditation, I don't know. Maybe I should do an hour of potting and pricking. Um, but that's a whole different channel, isn't it? But let's just have a look at one of these. I'm going <clears> to <throat> divvy up. Where's my scissors? Oh, I could do with a smaller, sharper pair. Never mind. So I'm going to make the same size hole because I'm going to put all of this compost in. Um, just having a look at which one looks a bit stronger. I think that one. So all I'm going to do is snip. Oh, it seems so terrible, doesn't it? Bye bye plant. <laughs> You've served your purpose so far. Let's pop you in on your own. So that's what I'll now do with the next 20 odd plants. Yep, job not to be rushed. Set that aside for a second. So I'm going to carry on with the peppers I'm going to turn the camera off in a minute for that. I'll also, ah, oh, let me just show you with the du long de long, the crazy stages they're at. These are the lovely, again, they're a sweet pepper, but they come out in that kind of long banana shape, bright red. So, these are where they're at. I mean, they couldn't look more different, could they? So that one, 
This one I think is ready to go into a pot on its own. It's got two, three true leaves. Brilliant. These two, they're just, just getting their first true leaves, so I'm going to leave them for a little while longer. This one, which took best part of six weeks to come up, is not looking happy at all, is it? So I'm going to just leave it and hope that it will come to something. So it looks like today I've got two like this to pot on, and then these three little weedy ones, which I'm just going to completely leave alone for now and see if they'll come to something more. There's no point in rushing them. You know, if they're gonna do it, they'll do it in their own time. And once they've done it, I'll catch them up with the other guys. Right, let's go and get the celeriac. Gorgeous little celeriac plants. Isn't that a happy sight? Now, <laughs> the thing with celeriac, as with celery, they give me the heebie-jeebies of nervousness because they're so tiny to handle. I tell you what, let's try and do this one as an example because they're all properly meshed and mashed together. <clears throat> now, previously, oh, and I'll show you this one as well. Previously, when I've done celery and last year the celeriac for the first time, I did them in the paper pots. <clears throat> stupidly, I've done them in the little plastic pots this year. I say stupidly because with the paper pots, at this stage, the paper pots are really soggy and they will literally just fall apart. So there's no banging, there's no, you know, you can just open it up gently and then very gently tease out the teeny tiny seedling. However, I didn't use the paper, Never mind. This one where only one has germinated, all I'm gonna do is just top it up a bit and firm it down. If you remember when they're sewed, they're sewn with, the just sewn on the surface of the compost and then when I actually come to potting them on, pricking them out, whatever, I just bring the soil just below the first two seedling leaves. Can't remember what they're called, there's a technical name for them, doesn't matter, who knows all the technical stuff, not me. Just below the seedling leaves. Now, here we go, this is where it's tricky, there's one, two, three, there's about four seedlings in there by the looks of it, or five, or maybe more. So all I'm going to do is, very gently, I'm just going to try and tip it out. Just, oh, I have to give it a little bit of a flick on the bottom. There we go. So that I'm not, let me just point you down a bit more again. Oh, sorry. Um, Yes, that I'm not trying to pull them all against each other. Then just locate one. Again, try not to touch the, the stems. In fact, not try not to touch the stems. Do not touch the stems. Find a decent sized leaf. Slightly untangle it from its neighbouring leaf. There we go. So now I can just separate this one. Again, just handling by the leaves and nothing else. But look how fine and spindly this is. It really is a job for when you've got a bit of time and patience. Don't do this when you're in a hurry or if you're feeling grumpy because it will make you so impatient and grumpier than a grumpy thing. Once it's in, all I'm doing is, I'm not going anywhere near the stem as I'm pressing, I'm just pressing all the compost around it. <clears throat> Sorry, I'll try and show you this in a sec. Just pressing around it, not on it. Just filling to just below, you see that's it's a little seedling leaf, little seed leaf. And then here, the base of where the stem is, and where the stem is sort of joining where that seed leaf is, this is where the actual bulb of the vegetable is gonna form. So when we come to planting out, <laughs> at this stage it doesn't feel like we'll ever plant them out because they're so teeny. But when we come to plant out, that's it's that little bulbous bit we just wanna get just on the top of the soil. They're tricky to plant out as well because they don't have masses of roots. Um, and you have to protect them from the wind a bit because you can imagine that they're, they're sort of top heavy and they're going to rock around a bit. 
But there we go. That is number one done of, well, I'm going to try and do about 30 for me, but I'm going to try and do as many of these as I can because my lovely friend Gary I forgot to sew any, so I'm going to see if I can save some of these for him too. So you can see I've got my work cut out for me this afternoon. I reckon it's probably going to take me best part of an hour <laughs> to get all this lariat done, but my goodness it's worth it. I'm going to whack the radio on in a second and see if there's a play on for the afternoon or some sports or something to listen to. Just lose myself in the action of doing it. If there's nothing decent on the radio, I'll just listen to the birds. And as I'm doing it, I'll think about what I'm going to cook for dinner tonight. <laughs> So, happy potting on, happy pricking out to all of you. From me, for now, it's cheerio, whilst I get stuck into this lot. See you all again really soon, I hope. But in the meantime, take care, everyone.